what is up everyone welcome back to another episode of the backyard um i'm finishing up some work at home in my home office currently um it's a little bit of a mess back there but um we got compa Yimi in the back um chilling i told him a joke and he just kind of died of laughter back there um but anyways jokes aside today we're starting a new segment called can we fix it and this is episode one basically uh what this series is going to entail is anytime something goes wrong with any of the vehicles be it the wrx the can-am dirt bike atv silverado whatever it may be whatever we have on the channel we're going to try to fix it um and in this episode we're working on the wrx So I know it's been a while since we've worked on the WRX or have shown any new WRX content on this channel, um, but I promise you it's for a reason. Um, before we get into what is going on with the WRX right now, I'll kind of talk about why we haven't been showing it on this channel. Um, and essentially I had big plans for the WRX. Um, right now we're currently sitting on E85 with whole catback, J-pipe, TGV delete, TGR delete, uh, front mount intercooler intake, and I might be missing a few other things. Uh, but the plan was basically to get and get some headers, some equal length headers, um, get a bypass valve, um, maybe a blow off valve or a hybrid valve, um, and do a couple other little things. But as many of y'all know, Cobb has went very um, emissions friendly, so I can't retune anything on my WRX with the Cobb access port because it will mess things up and not let me update anything. So I got to keep the current tune, on, tune I'm on mainly because I have the EGR TGV deletes, the J-pipe and the flex fuel kit. Um, so none of those are carb legal currently. Um, and we're in California. Um, but regardless, Cobb is doing this across the whole United States. So whether you're in California, Utah, Texas, Arizona, whatever, Cobb is making it so that everything that they release has to be emissions certified, smog compliant, carb compliant, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I have a couple options. Um, I know Cobb is planning to release the new flex fuel kit that's carb legal. But that kind of puts us in a weird situation where we have to take off the J-Pipe, take off the EGR and the TGV deletes. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to pay a whole bunch of money to take off mods that I've already paid money on and installed and get a retune that way. The other option is if we want to get the, um, the headers and anything else, we can tune via Ecutech. So I talked to my tuner, he says we can tune through Ecutech, but that's going to be a whole nother, paying another six to $800 because it's a new tuning software. You can't just go in and kind of tweak things um, easily. At least that's my understanding. I don't know. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but typically when you get a tune with the Cobb Access Port, the first time you pay the seven dollars $800 fee, then when you come back, it's kind of per hour on the dyno, like $100 an hour or so um, per set. Um, and usually per session, it's like one... 150 200 at most um to retune your car because most of the stuff is already there you kind of just got to adjust some things so we ended up deciding to keep the car as is we might do some more aesthetic mods and whatnot but in terms of performance i, I think we're pretty much done um i did have some coilovers for the car and i ended up selling them because one reason i was kind of planning to sell the wrx but ended up deciding to keep it because I ended up finding the truck that I wanted. Um, the other reason was I kind of didn't want to be scraping everywhere if I'm honest. And my driveway is kind of steep and I already scrape as it is. We might end up getting some coilovers in the future, but as of right now, it's kind of going to stand how it is. Uh, enough on that. That's kind of the reason you haven't seen the WRX that much. Um, I am planning on doing some... Uh, Kind of POV videos because I don't think I've done many with the E85 tune. Um, now that we're pushing close to 400 wheel horsepower, you know, I gotta do some nice spirited runs with that. Um, so those might be coming soon. Um, we've been focusing a lot on the Can Am and the truck and getting all that ready. Um, so that's 
another reason why there hasn't been a lot of sous vide content. But that is going to change. Today we kind of have to give you guys some sous vide content uh, because it's not running perfectly. The car's running, it's drivable, it's just it has a very minor boost leak. Um, the boost leak actually started a lot bigger. Um, I was hearing this noise here. I'll cue the video right now if I have it. Um, but basically it was a high-pitched noise um, that would um, that I could hear at certain RPMs and it was weird it was across every single gear first gear second gear third gear fourth gear you name it um, at different RPMs at each gear you would just hear a high-pitched squeal like ee, ee. so I did some research there wasn't much on it um, but my kind of intuition was telling me that I had a boost leak um, and that's because I felt like I wasn't getting full power like I wasn't leaking at like 10 PSI or anything. I could still get up to 15, uh, 18 sometimes, but I wasn't getting it full and it felt like it was kind of lacking. Um, so I cranked up the car, took a look, and lo and behold, cute picture here. My turbo inlet had completely cracked, shaved off. And this is a common problem with a lot of fucking WRXs because the inlet tube, it's plastic and it does a lot of flexing. Um, so it's just a matter of time before it shears off. And then I have the front mount intercooler with kind of just angles with everything with the bypass valve and everything. So I, I don't think that helped um, and caused it to break even sooner than what it should have. Honestly, I'm not sure when they usually break, but a lot of people on YouTube have shown them breaking. Um, so we had a couple options. Basically, we could install the stock turbo inlet or an aftermarket turbo inlet. And I went with the aftermarket because the plastic one is junk. I didn't want it to break. The nice thing is you don't need a tune with this stuff because it's just the replacing a pipe, airflow, whatever. Um, the airflow is the same. It's not going to change anything. Um, so we went with the Grim Speed cast turbo inlet, some aluminum turbo inlet. I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the other option was either a Cobb one, that one was a little bit more expensive. Um, and then there was the Perrin silicone inlet. I Initially I wanted the Perrin one, but after doing some investigation, there's a lot of cutting and manipulation you have to do to it to make things work properly and fit properly with all the modifications that I had. So I decided, nah, scratch that. We're not doing that. Um, so that got installed and it kind of fixed the problem. Um, but now at deceleration, I still have the same issue. I don't have it while, before I used to have it while driving, like I'd be coasting at 2,500 RPMs and it was a constant high pitch noise. Um, and you can just tell it was leaking. It was completely leaking. Um, so now it happens sometimes on acceleration, but mostly on deceleration. Once the RPMs are kind of dropping down and it hits that 2,000, 1,500 RPM mark, you hear that high pitch squeal. Um, so today we're going to try to fix that. By the way, that's coming soon. Stay tuned. Um, but anyways, I think I have it figured out. I hope I have it figured out. We have a box right here with the new part that we're going to install. Um, so I went ahead and I ordered this, I already opened it, but I ordered a Boomba bypass valve. Um, so the nice thing about these is they're fully recirculating. Um, so no tune is required, basically does the same thing as the stock one, but let me go ahead and take this out carefully, but it's not plastic. I believe it's cast aluminum. Or something of that sort um, it's a nice sturdy metal um, it comes with this adapter hose I think um, so that the so that you can make the stock one longer um, but it's basically just a plug-and-play swap should be fairly easy 
Um, I believe this part goes in the turbo inlet and this part goes into the, what is it? The intercooler portion. Um, I'll show you right now. I might be blanking on what it actually is, but yeah, this should work a lot better than our stock one. So we're gonna go ahead and get everything set up so that we can install this. Beautiful. I just want you to know you're better than my stock BPV. Now that we got what we need, we'll go ahead and jack the car up on the ramps. Now we just gotta get under there and remove the little plastic trim so that we can access the bypass valve. So I went ahead and removed part of the skid plate. See, I left the metal piece right there. I left this metal piece and I'm hoping that just by removing this side I can have enough access to remove the bypass valve which is right here this is what we're looking at here this is a grim speed inlet I was talking to you guys about right here kind of hard to see um, but that replaces a stock plastic one that one sheared off right here so now this one has that silicone adapter and we can try to take off our bypass valve. So we got the bypass valve out. Um, we did have to remove the whole turbo inlet here, as you can see, um, just cause it was kind of a pain getting access to that right there. Um, so we kind of took out the inlet, dropped it, and then we're able to pull out that hose there and the bypass valve from there and there and now we can put in our new one just to kind of give you a demonstration so you can tell it's kind of leaky i don't know if you can hear but i'm gonna blow into it i don't know if you can hear that but you can hear the air going through both sides now we take the boomba one no air nothing sucking through so that stock one is definitely leaky and this should help us out. So I went ahead and attached the hose fitting first, um, just so we don't have to worry about putting it in the car once this is already in. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and try and attach that. Check the Crocs though. So everything's pretty much attached in place. Um, that's going into the turbo. That's going into the inlet and then that adapter is connected to our vacuum hose and then we routed them making sure there's no kinks and any obstruction of airflow. So now basically just gotta tighten up the top clamp. So that clamp and that clamp. So we're gonna tighten those up and we should be good to go once we tighten those up and also put our inlet back in with the screws. So I'm going to plug in my access port just to make sure all the fuel ratios are looking good. Um, I typically don't keep it plugged in. Uh, once it fell off from here, I kind of just let it chill. Whenever something's weird, then I check it. Went ahead and turned on the car. Our air fuel ratios look normal for idle. Correction's a little high, but that's usually normal. That one fluctuates. Um, AF learning looks good. That's the one that's most concerning. Our boost is pulling vacuum. So you can see we're at negative 10.8, 11. Typically you wanna make sure you're pulling vacuum. One time uh, my valve was disconnected at the vacuum line and it was like at negative six and it sounded like it was cammed. Um, but everything's normal. I'm gonna give it a quick little rev, see if we can hear the bypass valve. So we finished up right on time. Everything's back together. All the skid plates are gone, or not gone, but they're back on the car. Um, I got a soccer game right now. I got my cleat bag right there. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and drive over to that. Um, do some in-car sounds on the way there. Everything seems normal so far at idle. Um, we just gotta drive it and see how it sounds and how it's all running. 
Hopefully the leak is gone. No more high pitch noises. Please, please, please. No more high pitch noises, but we'll see. Ooh, my hands dirty. Well, we're in the car, I'm about to head out. Wifey's putting the GPS to the soccer field because I don't remember how to get there. Um, but yeah, about to record some initial reactions of the bypass valve. lights um, but hopefully we can get some of that later all right babe so we did our first driving with the bypass valve what are your thoughts what do you think it drove smooth <clears throat> it drove smooth you heard it here first um so premise of this series was can we fix it and we did we fixed it like bob the builder um no more high-pitched noises. I usually hear them when I'm uh, kind of backing into a spot or uh, parking into a spot slowly. Didn't hear any high-pitched noises. Um, definitely hear the bypass valve a lot louder than the stock one. Um, so hopefully it should hold up. Um, I don't know if you guys could hear them through the video. I'll definitely try to do some more recordings tomorrow when I go into work. Um, and hopefully some outside of the car. I think you can hear it better on the outside. But with that being said, thanks for watching. Stay blessed. Peace.